This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. It is Tuesday, August 17, 727 at nighttime. Got an emergency service call for a walk-in freezer not working. We have no power going to the IntelliGen display. Well, I should say no power. It's not lit up. Um, everything in here looks like it should. Nothing crazy. It doesn't look like a power switch right there. So, I would think we should have power. So, uh, we need to jump up onto the roof and see what's going on up there. Uh, come up onto the roof. This is my condenser right here. Typically on these Intelligens, they have their own power source separate from the condenser, but I checked all the breakers and there's no breakers that are tripped. So this one might be powered from here. So we're gonna open this guy up and dig into it. All right, um, we're in here. This is my disconnect, or my disconnect is right there. I didn't turn it off yet and I wanna check power in here to see what's going on here. So this is the line voltage coming in. 203, one to two. 201, 200, two to three. And then we have one to three, 202. So we have power coming into the disconnect switch. The problem is not in there. We have power here, but our problem is on the power going down to the evaporators. Now, um, question is, has this one been wired? No, I don't think it has. When I installed this equipment, I believe I told him to get an electrician out, if I remember right, because I installed it in 2020. And I believe that's what this J box is for. I believe I wanted them to have the electrician power the coils from there maybe? Huh. I don't quite remember this, but I remember one of these things. I remember, I think I even put that X with tape on there because I wanted them to open that up. Maybe there's a J box in there or something. Well, regardless, we got to figure out why our evaporator doesn't have power. Um, we have three phase up here. We need to find the power going down to the evaporator. Is it up here or is it powered separately? We'll find that out right now. So I come down here and that's just the control board. You come over to this side and we look at the schematic and it says line voltage should be hooked up to H2 and J. On H2 and J, I have 202 volts. So then what they're gonna do is there's gonna be a transformer. Transformer from F2 and J. So we need to check F2 to J to see if we have 208 volts there. All right, we have 202 volts from F2 to J, okay? And then we should have, I believe, 24 volts coming out of that transformer going to the other side. We're gonna go over to that side where the controls are at. All right, according to that, we have 24 volts VAC, and then I'm assuming that's the common RTN. We're checking right there, and when we check the transformer, we have zero volts coming out of the transformer. So we need to find that transformer. I believe it's on this side back behind that electrical panel, but we gotta turn off power to check it out first. And I am looking at this, and I did make this. This is where I wanted the electrician to hook up the power for the coil, and it never happened. See, I ran it all for him. That goes right into that box right there. Um, and it never happened or whatever. So, but anyways, regardless, we're gonna turn this off. We'll verify, but that should shut off the power to the coil. And then we gotta dive into that transformer. All right, I confirmed that power's off, okay? This, you take these two screws out, this panel just moves out of the way. I can kind of smell the faint burning smell in here. Just ever so slightly a burning smell. So our transformer's right here. We need to open this up and verify everything's correct in there. I'm gonna pull it off the thing so we can analyze it in our hands. Okay, we got our transformer right there. We're gonna go meter on continuity. Primary side has continuity. Let's go to the secondary of the load. I don't know that that's right. The secondary side has 0.81. Seems a little strange. And that transformer sure smells burnt. It doesn't smell good at all. All right, yeah, it's what I suspected. We've got 201 volts going in and we have 
nothing coming out. So that, that 0.85 that I was reading on the load side was funky like I thought. So we got a bad transformer. Question is why did it fail? I don't know. I don't have an OEM transformer, but there's not really much special about this transformer. So we're gonna put a standard, I have a 75 VA with a resettable transformer. Um, I'll put that on this guy right now. All right, I got it back together. Um, it's temporary, you know, it's not gonna be a permanent fix, but I got it back together. So we're gonna go turn this power on. I also grabbed the 24 volt wires and checked them to ground to make sure there was no obvious shorts, nothing shorting out. So I'm gonna turn on power and hope for the best. Well, we have a display. Let's see what happens as it turns on. We're gonna give it a minute for its startup and see what goes down here. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these. I can't quite remember what the sequence is here, but I'm going through the monitor. So it says box temps 53 degrees, negative 10, operating mode off. Let's give it a few minutes to turn on. I think if I remember right, it'll turn itself on it. Like I said, it's been a while since I've worked on one of these intelligence. The fact that it's running is a good sign. I don't see anything in here that would have caused it to uh, do anything funky. I don't know. It says board voltage, 25 volts. That's good. Well, it's defrost, it has memory, so it's not like the board is completely blank or anything. Box temp, system, freezer, operating mode off. We gotta get it to turn on. I don't remember how to do that. Read only, I'll have to go through it. I can't remember, I think it turns itself on, if I remember right. Look at this light too, this light's like falling down. It's turning on. You know what though? I noticed something that this cable was coming out. The cable was loose and I pushed on it and then it started running. It sounds like it just turned on. Cooling, yeah, it just turned on right now. Huh, it's interesting. Wonder what caused it to ruin that transformer. I'm a little worried because. No, no, I think it's running. Huh, the EXV. I keep hearing a clicking sound from back of the coil. Oh, no, it looks like it's running. That's a little disconcerting. It's uh, it just turned off and turned back on. Huh. It shouldn't be short cycling. We're running a clear sight glass. Let's make sure this thing stays running. The suction line's not very cold at all. I wonder if there's a problem with that expansion valve or EEV. Yeah, we're running really high discharge. That's why this guy's running because we're not getting very cold suction gas coming back. Well, let's give it some time and see if it stabilizes out. It's getting cold in here and it's running. My EXV is open 108 steps. So it's doing a decent job. So we're just gonna let it run for a bit. See it drop box temps 35. So we're gonna give it some time, let it pull the box down. All right. dropped about 15 degrees it's about 21 degrees in here right now so I went and had dinner it's been about half an hour 45 minutes so I'm gonna go put the condensing unit back together and we're gonna come back and follow up later all right it's obviously dark outside now um, equipment's running now I don't see any need to put refrigerant gauges or refrigeration gauges on this guy because it seems to be operating properly uh, we've got a clear sight glass. The system's dropping in temperature significantly, 10 to 15 degrees, or 15, yeah. Um, I don't see a big issue with this. Now, what caused that transformer to go bad? That's what concerns me, I don't know. Um, I did find that that parallel cable for the display, I told you was loose, because the thing, it, was, it, wasn't, it was like clicking and making a weird sound, and when I pushed it in, everything started working on it. I don't know if it was a loose connection that caused it. It's possible, but we're definitely gonna follow up on this one. So 
Um, I'm going to let the equipment run. Um, I'm pretty much done. Everything else is good for now. Um, I will say that I went and I checked on their walk-in cooler. Or maybe that's a walk-in. I think that's a walk-in cooler. Uh, just because I was curious and the evaporator is really dirty. So they're not going to get a choice and we're going to clean that evaporator too. Because I don't need that to be another emergency service call. I've been doing this more and more with these customers. When I come out here, I'll go walk by all their other walk-ins. And if they're dirty, I just clean them. I mean, I know that corporate will approve it anyways. But I'm sick of these late night service calls. Now, I had to leave my daughter's. I mean, it's life. You know, this is a refrigeration technician. But I was at my daughter's cheerleading practice you know I, I was there for like 25 minutes and then I got this service call and then of course my wife just called me right now to say you know or ask you know if I was going to be home for dinner and I was like no because I went next door and ate some food while I was waiting for this to come down to 10 so you know I didn't get to sit and eat dinner either and and that's the life of a refrigeration technician I mean we're on call 24 7 it happens but when it happens and it's something that could have been prevented, like a dirty coil causing it to ice up later in the future, that's what I want to try to prevent, you know? This was a legit electrical short of some sort. I'm not worried about this. This is, it is what it is, you know? And, and I don't ever like yell at the customers or anything like that. I mean, I want them to keep calling me. It's just, it does get frustrating at times, but you know, I'm glad that they call me and not someone else. So it is what it is, right? Seems I've been getting more and more of those frustrating, you know, late evening service calls. Um, I think we were spoiled during the whole COVID thing because the calls were so minimal and I was just so excited to get a service call in general because we definitely slowed down a bit in the COVID craziness, right? Especially in the very beginning. But now that we're really back into the full swing, these restaurants are 100% open, at least for the time being. It's currently August 28th of 2021. Um, the service calls are going through the roof, you know, and it's, it's everybody catching back up. And, and I don't fault. I really don't. I know there's so many comments that say these restaurants are nasty and that they're cheap and all this stuff. I don't see it that way. I see it the other way. I see these as businesses that are trying to survive. And while I think they're a little misguided in their idea of where the best place to save money is, I mean, inevitably it's the corporation's decision to make a choice on where they got to spend money, you know, cut back on uh, repair and maintenance, right? Preventative repair and maintenance and focus more on retaining employees and that kind of stuff. And I feel like their priorities are where they need to be. While it frustrates me as a service technician, it's just kind of part of the game. And I'm not like, like while, while I do have a bit of frustration in the moment, in the grand scheme of things, I kind of understand I mean, it's really survival of the fittest right now, and they're just doing anything they can. So yes, there is frustration on my part towards them. You know, in this situation, this this call was not really preventable. This was just an electrical failure. But I will say that I could probably say 80% of my calls in the last year have been preventable service calls, Okay. Had they done routine maintenance, they could prevent probably 80%. And that's a number off the top of my head. I'd say 20% of the calls were just, you know, failures of components and stuff. But a lot of it is cleaning stuff or um, improper practices by the employees, washing things incorrectly. I mean, I can't tell you how many times when we're doing service calls, things get shorted out. Temperature, just this last week, I went out on a temperature controller call, actually just yesterday, Friday afternoon, I went out on a service call for a bar reach and not working temperature controller had no display, but it had 120 volts going to it. When we pulled the control out to look at the back of it, it's full of calcium. Okay. So while I'm going off on a tangent, as I usually do, the point I'm trying to make is these service calls can be frustrating in the moment. Okay. In the end, while I'm editing this video and I'm reflecting on it, I'm thankful that I'm given the opportunity to do these service calls. Okay. But I am human. And I do have emotions, um, I, you know, I, I, I kind of go all over the place with them. You know, they're, they're, I, I got some mental issues for sure. Okay. So one minute I'm mad, the next minute I'm happy. The next minute I'm mad. The next minute I'm thinking about puppies, you know, I mean, it just kind of goes all over the place, but, um, it's okay. At least the way that I see it, it's okay to be upset just as long as you know when and when you're not supposed to vent your frustration, right? It's okay to vent it in a certain moment. Talk to a friend. Hey, can I vent to you? I'm frustrated. I'm never going to vent my frustrations towards management or towards the, the, the customer, right? Because 
even if the customer is unjustified and they're a butthead, right? I want them to keep calling me back most of the time. So I'm just going to bite my tongue, fix it, get it going. In the end, it is what it is, man. And, and there's so many different ways to look at this craziness. Why did they wait until late in the evening to call me? While that's frustrating, step back and look at the whole situation. <laughs> look at the big picture, right? These restaurants are short staffed. The managers are short staffed. Uh, if you know anything about restaurant operations, their majority of them are not following the protocols that they used to follow because they simply don't have the time. They're overworked, they're understaffed, you know, and they just can't even keep up with their normal operations. Half the time, I have restaurants that come in at eight in the morning. And by 9.30, they realize they can't open the doors to the restaurant because they don't have cooks to cook in the kitchen because three cooks called off sick, right? This is happening more and more every single day. So again, I'm not giving them a pass saying that they have a justification to be jerks. But at the same time, guys, when we're getting frustrated at these restaurants, just remember they're going through crazy things too, okay? Just keep that in the back of your mind. Bite your tongue, get it fixed, and collect your check. I mean, when it comes down to it, I want them to keep calling me back and I'm sure you want them to keep calling you back too. You want to keep working. So just remember that when you get frustrated on these emergency service calls, okay? I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video as usual. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all the channel support. I'm so humbled by all of it. You guys are blowing me away with the comments, the interaction, the thumbs up, the likes. Um, it's amazing. If you guys haven't already, please go check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have some merchandise available on there. It's a great way to help support the channel. Other ways to help support the channel, the easiest way is simply just watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. That's the easiest way, guys. And then uh, obviously my website, hvacrvideos.com. You can support the channel via Patreon. You can become a patron, which is just a monthly commitment. We have so many awesome patrons. Uh, you could become a YouTube channel membership, which is basically just Google's idea of patreon basically you can support the channel via a monthly commitment it just charges your credit card uh you can support the channel via paypal um if you're interested in purchasing any tools you can go to truetechtools.com you can use my offer code big picture as of today 828 of 2021 you can save eight percent on your order on checkout using my offer code big picture one word um if you know what you're going to purchase from True Tech Tools, shoot me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com and tell me what it is and I can generate an affiliate link. It gets me a little bit of an extra commission and it and you still get to use the 8% discount code. I just get a little bit more support. doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, remember, I try to do live streams Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, where I just kind of answer the questions, consolidate all the common questions and answer them in a live format. And then I also go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel with my buddies, Adam, Joe and Bill. And we just kind of recap the week and hang out and relax. So thank you guys so very much. Hey, guys, be kind to one another. We really, really need more kindness. Uh, this is a crazy time in life right now. There's so many opinions left, right, middle, upside down, inside out. There's so many opinions and everybody's getting so angered and fired up. And I feel like we really, really could just use some kindness. Be kind to one another and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.